Hello everyone and welcome along to round 7 team of the week. Two magnificent games over the round number 7. It was the All Flakes with a very, very tight win over a tough competitive Corn Flakers side. Easily the match of the round, a stunning game it was indeed. The other game from the round was of course the Guardians of the Crib absolutely destroying Munster in their round seven fixture so points on the board for the all flakes and for the guardians of the crib who now sit atop the flakers the only team out of the three to have a loss next to their name so team of the week round number seven we have a whole pile to go through so let's get straight into it all right so let's kick things off here of course with try of the week and let's take a look back to round six and who took out the award for try of the week round number six you all had your say in the straw poll and here is what the final say was coming in in fourth position with 13 percent of the votes from the corn flakers was tom harris in third omar solomon from the guardians of the crib come away with 20 percent of the votes james dooley he was number two from the flakers 27 percent from him and number one ken pringle with 40% from the Guardians, here is your try of the week for round six. McKibben goes to the left side. Fiddler has all over Rob Horn. Oh my goodness. Turnover ball. Heads away for Solomon. It's five on one. Falau has to work hard. Jones backs up Pringle. The man who starts it all gets the reward. What an outstanding try from the Guardians. A fantastic try that was as well. Congratulations to Ken Pringle for taking out try of the week for round number six. Of course, we have another four tries for you to wet your whistle with as for try of the week for round number seven. Four crackers, as you may notice, throughout the this edition of team of the week a lot was taken from the all flakes versus the flakers match just because of the monumental occasion that this matchup was so let's have a look number one marshall hannah from the all flakes check this one out he is by far and away the leading point scorer it's oh what a play and it's a runaway it's a beautiful chance of grayson it goes away to marshall hannah and they have the speed it's a try in the all flakes oh what a turnaround what a play off the kickoff if that one's not your cup of tea how about this effort from the corn flakers aiden adeleki solomon oh he swamped and he loses the ball to mcdonald now it's the flakers running away it's a chance for malpass gets the ball beautifully it's a pot and aiden adeleki solomon has scored for the flakers oh what an extraordinary play from michael Curtin. The third contestant for try of the week comes from the All Flakes again. This time it's George Lamb. Now, have a look at more than just a try on this one. How about the monumental time just when he scored it? The effect this try had is massive. Hamish Reed. Way to cross it. Misses out again. Looks for Ryan. Goes Holton. Now it's 101. It's there. And it's a fan. And in for the try. It's George Lamb. He's in. The All Flags take the lead. And of course, the Guardians of the Crib had a smashing win with eight tries to pick from from their match against the Munster. But number four for Team of the Week will go to Callum Cordwell who scored this brilliant try, just carving the defense to ribbons one of many times, but this one was definitely the pick of the bunch from the Guardians. Advantage over. Advantage quickly over. As the Guardians look to affect some more pain, Jones away to Cordwell. He is all alone out here. Puts in a little chip. Here comes the defense. Oh, that's a try. That is a stunner. What do you say about try of the week? So which was your favourite out of those four cracking tries? You can have your say, as always, since we've done with the try of the week, with the straw poll. Link in the description and should be on screen right now. You can go to that link, 
put it in your address bar and have your say as to who you think deserves the try of the week for round number seven. All right, so as you get that all sorted out, let's have a look at some statistics coming out of round seven. First off, we'll kick things underway with the tackle count. Here are the cream of the crop, and there's one man who's by far and away leading this tally. It is tackle count, and it is Elliot Malpass. He has 32 successful tackles. Now, he was on 23 after round six. That means he accumulated a massive nine successful tackles in his time with the Flakers, a massive part of their defensive work. And number two, we have a new entry of Ivan Ferryland coming from nowhere with 23 tackles from the Guardians. Owen Richards is accompanied alongside Gumbry Heads, Liam Robinson, and another newcomer to the ladder, Ian McDonald, all on 22. The Guardians are making a good amount of these top few on the list as well. Tip tops there on 20. He is outright in that position. A new entry as well from the All Flakes. Callum Fiddler's there on 19. Lou Jones meets in there as well. And Chris Smith from the Flakers, another new entry, sits there at the bottom of this top count from the tackle area. Into the second piece of statistics, and it's the meters gained, running meters gained, that is, and leading the way. This is massive as well. Jonathan Cranine, he lost out that top spot in round six to Andrew McFadden, but he's come back with a vengeance here. 560 metres for the Flakers fly half. The man is a machine at the moment. Scoring points, scoring tries, and running riot through the defensive lines. McFadden sits second, 371, still by his own right, right up there in terms of running metres gained. Aiden Adelecki Sullivan storms into third place of 289 metres. Kieran Jones is there, number four, 266 from the Guardians. Elliot Malpass, 240 from the Flakers. Owen Richards, 228. Logan Banks, 204. Lou Jones, 201. Mitchell Watley, 199. Equal with the only newcomer into this list, Jake Waller, with 199 metres for the Guardians. Alrighty, so now we move into the big boys. This is where the major points are scored and the big line breakers, the try scoring finishers, make their way into the table. Leading the way, still at the top, is Jonathan Cranine. Five tries from him so far. In second position, we have three players Logan Priest, Karen Jones, and Aiden Adeleki Solomon. All with four tries. We have a host of players on three tries down the list now. We have Ruby Floyd, Will Rogers, Pierre Valentine, Tom Harris, and Callum Caldwell storming into the middle of this leaderboard. Two tries uh, further down. David Sloan, Heston Gardner makes his way in there. Ryan Heiken and Omar Solomon, James Dooley, and Peter Smart with a double in his last match making his way to the foot of this table. But finally, this is where the real meat is cut. It is the leading point scorer, really, where the best of the best want to be sitting at the top of the list. Over double these points of second position is Jonathan Cranine. He is still the man to beat when it comes to tries, running meters, and points scored. He is way up there on 50 points. Douglas Eddington is second with 22 alongside Riley Crosshand with his great effort in the last match, putting him on 22 as well. A couple here on the 20 points with four tries. Logan Priest, and Natalie Solomon, and Kieran Jones. David Sloan is there on 18. It is Lou Jones and Jake Waller on 16. Waller, a new man into this list as well. Ruby Floyd, Will Rogers, Brandon Rudman, Pierre Valentine, Tom Harris, and Callum Caldwell all sit on 15 points from seven rounds of the competition so far. That is it. Stats are done. The big names of this tournament are ready and playing out there with their names on the leaderboard. But the big one that everyone wants to be part of is the team of the week. Round seven. Let's go. So as you may notice as we go through this team of the week, it is very much dominated by two teams who had extraordinarily difficult matches. That was against each other. 
the All Flakes and the Flakers. They were the two teams that had to play through some absolute brutal matchups. So that is why they dominate this team of the week, just because of the match they had to play. The Guardians, they played brilliantly, but they had a pretty easy game that they completely dominated. As a lot of you have mentioned before, it is all about the opponent as much as it is about the performance. So let's get in to the starting 15. We kick things off here in the front row as per always. And our starting front rowers will be on the loose head side. Sol Solomon from the All Flakes. Maximus Wilder in the middle from the Guardians. And Chris Smith from the Flakers. One per team in the front row. Amazing to have those three all together for the team of the week. Great work of Solomon around the field alongside Chris Smith. Were fantastic ball running along with their great work. In the tight as well. Into the second row, and there's one man you just cannot keep out of the team of the week in magnificent displays at the moment. That is Ian McDonald from the Flakers. He's partnered by Liam Robinson, who was absolutely sublime for the All Flakes. Moving to the back row now, and we'll go with number six on the blind side from the Guardians of the Crib, Ronan Calvert. An outstanding match from him. Number seven will be Michael Curitan from the Flakers, who was simply superb. His Part in those tries was outstanding. At number eight, Marshall Hanna from the All Flakes. What a game he had, scoring one of the best tries we have seen from the series so far. Moving into the back line, and George Thomas will lead the way at Scrum Half from the Flakers. His partnership was very good through the house for the Flakers, and they made a good fist of why their team did so well. He is quick around the field, made some very good little breaks, elusive around the ruck as well, but defensively he was outstanding. Number 10 fly half goes to Hamish McAllister, and for many reasons, more than just the fact that it was his first real match of the series, and he did show how good he could really be for the Guardians. He ran the play very well, his distribution was outstanding, and really when a backline scores that many tries, the man who directs the play has to take a bit of credit. He was brilliant for the Guardians as well. The centre pairing will go to the All Flakes and the Guardians. Nathan Ryan to 12. Callum Cordwell will be there from the Guardians at outside centre. While Cordwell, what can you say? He was fantastic. He tore Munster to absolute shreds. Absolute tore them to part. A blistering match from Cordwell. He was fantastic. But don't forget the efforts from Nathan Wright. Although he didn't get himself on the scoreboard, he didn't single-handedly blow this match up. I think, though, his initial break set really drew that defense in for the All Flags backline was the reason that the likes of George Lamb were able to score those decisive tries. I think Ryan played very well. Unlucky to miss out will be the outside centre as well for the All Flakes. Who was Ethan Holton and of course for the Guardians as well who played very well. Heston Gardner deserves a mention. But I just think for the overall impact in the match, I think those two were definitely two of the best. Into the wingers and this was definitely the hardest pass to pick. No question about this whatsoever. And straight away, I'll give credit where it's due for some other players. Uh, the likes of Peter Smart played very well as we got Logan Priest with the All Flakes. Didn't get himself on the scoreboard, but still very, very well he played for his side. But the ones I'm going for here will be on the left side, Aiden Adeleke Solomon, who will also be my player of round seven. His tries were phenomenal, especially the second was outstanding and such a white hot atmosphere as well. Credit has to be given to Aiden Adeleke Solomon on the right, George Lamb. This was tough, very, very tough to give Lamb the spot. I think he deserved it, but I just think the impact, the timing, and just what this try did for the All Flakes single-handedly outweighs what anything else happened throughout the other matches as well. That try and how he developed his game throughout that match to suit, to work with the centers, and eventually get that killer play in the end to win the All Flakes the match. At fullback, we have another one from the All Flakes, Sebastian Kyle. Now this man, normally a scrum half, a little man, but his effort, his work at fullback 
was amazing. I think he was definitely one of the best performers. You don't see much from fullbacks at all in Rugby Challenge, but the way he influenced this match with his defence, covering, taking kicks as well, he stopped a couple of certain tries for the Flakers. A great match from Sebastian Kyle. So there it is. That is your Team of the Week for round number seven. Do not forget, get in there, vote on that straw poll as well, and get in the action. Have your say for try of the week for round number seven as well. Let me know your thoughts about this week's Team of the Week. A very, very tough one to pick as well, with two very contrasting matches with the likes of the All Flakes and the Flakers. You know, that was probably the toughest, most competitive match we've had by far. And then an absolute thrashing from the Guardians up against Munster. So, contrasting matches. I think it's a very good side from what we had. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. But for this round, round seven, Team of the Week, I am done and dusted. Thank you for tuning and watching. Hope you're enjoying the series. For all those of you that are new to the channel, thank you for joining us here. And if you're wanting to join a subscriber series, as has been said before, you may have seen, you may not have seen, we cannot add new players during the season. So if you're wanting to join in, you have to wait for Season 2, which I'm hoping will be coming when Rugby Challenge 3 is released. We'll come through Season 1, and we'll have another stab in Season 2. So keep your ideas well and truly in for that, which hopefully should be coming up. I, I can't even, I don't even know when it's going to be coming up for Rugby Challenge 3, but hopefully very soon. So hope you're all enjoying the series. It's a fantastic one, and I'll see you all next time. Until then, take care.